Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. There we go. There we go. Uh, Whoa, where are you at? I'm in my games room. That is so cool. Who is the creepy dude behind you? <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'll bring that down. <laughs> so this is... Uh, Looks like Wayne's World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Found this... Uh, you can get these mannequin heads at, uh, at um, what's it called, Michael's? Okay, yeah. And, and then this is the mullet from uh, CCMAs? Yes. Right, and, and then there's the... Uh, his lipstick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Vader got her hands on it, so... He's, uh, I'll show you the eyes, it's hilarious. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Hey, it's pretty good. Not creepy, though, at <laughs> all. <laughs> That's amazing. You have quite the jersey collection. Yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't want to throw shade at Dirk Bentley, but I've been collecting them since like 2001. Okay. Yeah. So I got that's, some. I got some pretty cool jerseys. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. He had. Uh, he was showing up all the uh, in his garage. I guess he opened up all the bins after a tour, and his, it was cool to see other guys uh, do that. Right. I know he's a big yeah. Awesome fan, but yeah. So cool. do you like? Do you collect them from every arena that you go to, or? Yeah, I used to do that. Like every time. Yeah, everywhere I've I've watched a team play there, I've gotten a jersey. So I've gotten all, a whole bunch from all over, and then I've gotten like some some cool one offs. Like uh, I don't know if you remember John Scott from the uh, the All Star game a couple of years yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And I got I got a uh, an All Star jersey with his name on the back of it. A guy like you just couldn't buy them, and I got one made. So I got just cool stuff like that. How cool! Yeah. Awesome. Um. So what's the weather like in British Columbia right now? It's been. It's been good, actually. Today was supposed to rain. I think it rained a bit last night, but we've been really lucky. It's, um, uh, yeah, we've been able to get outside and, and, you know, do our social distancing, but getting some exercise at the same time to walk around. Yeah, the I think that's the most important thing for everyone to be able to stay sane is to be able to at least get outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what's Veda's, like, thing? Is she feeling cooped up? Because I feel like kids, a lot of people are saying kids are having the hardest time with it. Yeah, we're trying to keep it... Um, you know, keep it the information stuff as far away as from her as possible, you know, but try to keep things um, fun with her. She's, you know, I'm not home this much normally, right? So, so we're just trying to look at it from, from her perspective and she's really happy about that. And, and uh, yeah, so we're spending some great quality time all together. And that's, that's a good thing about it. And yeah. A lot of bike girl, she's like, this is awesome that this is happening because dad is home so much. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's, that's been a challenge, right? We were all going through our own sort of processing what's going on, but trying not to have it affect the kids as much as possible. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you teased that you're going to be teasing some new music. Um, yes. How much new music are you going to be sharing? I think I have um, five out of the six songs on the EP. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. How long have you been working on these ones? These ones since before CCMAs last year. Okay. Yeah, um, for quite a long time, actually. Yeah. Now, I, I think last time I talked to you, you said first single, or at least one of the ones you've got is called Like a Man. Yeah. Yep. Like a Man. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the April 4th, I think, is the, um, is the release date on oh, that one. So soon. It's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll preview a bit of it today, I think, or somewhere online. Nice. Preview a bit. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this one. Uh, most of my stuff is pretty like high tempo generally um, and heavier. This one's a bit more down the autograph sort of um, vein. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, I was watching, I don't know if you knew, uh, Tim McGraw did this thing recently on socials. He did like a deep cuts challenge. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So he was getting everyone to like, you know, play their favorite deep cut. And I was trying to think, I'm like, every time I see you in concert, I feel like you have so, every song you play is either has been a single or is a hit. Um, but is there one of the songs on like one of your EPs or albums that's a deep cut that you're like, oh, I wish that one had have gotten a little bit more life? For sure. Yeah, it was a song called uh, Wrong About That on, um, I believe yeah. it was on the Lifted Record. Yes. I, was, I love that song. So good. I yeah. feel like I've listened to all your, I, I'm a big album person, so I listen to albums start to finish when they come out. Uh, mm. But yeah, do you play that one live ever? We, uh, we stopped playing it. We just pulled it out occasionally, but we played that one live when that record came out. It was probably three years, four years before we stopped playing that one regularly. Yeah. yeah. Is there a song that you find, um, I mean, obviously Cheap Seats, I feel like you, if you didn't play it, you'd get in a lot of trouble with your fans. Um, yeah. Yeah. But is there a song that you, you get requested for often that you're kind of shocked 
people ask for or not shocked, but um, you kind of go, Oh, cool. Somebody that's been a fan for, for a while. I think um, uh, a song called and then some off uh, the first record off jump right in. Yep. That's the one that continuously, you know, is getting requested. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Especially in acoustic events. A lot of people want to hear that one acoustic. Um, have you found, cause I feel like, I don't know when you're at a point in your career, I feel like everyone's, you know, as a writer, writers are trying to write songs for Dallas Smith. They're like, Oh, I got to get him to cut one of my songs is, do you have like a process you go through when you're listening to songs to figure out if they work for you? I just, honestly, I listen as a fan. I just listen like I would any other, other music. And, you know, obviously they're in their infancy stage or demos. Some of them don't sound as good. You try to get past that and just listen mm -hmm. to the lyric and the message and the song, and how it makes you feel. And it's, if it, if it makes my brain, you know, get that little bit of serotonin and, and really connect with the song and make me feel a certain thing. Yeah. That's, when, that's when I know this song needs to see the light of day and, and hopefully I can do some justice to it, you know? Yeah. Cause I always, I'm always interested in the songwriting um, part of it. And I look through of like writers that have written songs of yours and I'm like, dang, you've got a lot of really cool writers that have, you know, written yeah. songs for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anybody from, yeah. Uh, Etheridge to the, all the FGL guys to. Ryan Hurd. Ross Ryan, Ryan Hurd. Yeah. Oh yeah. Rodney Clawson. A lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. cool writers. Um, have you ever had, a song that you've maybe turned down and somebody else has released it and you've gone, oh man, I should have recorded that. You have? I think everybody has, you know, I think if you've been around long enough, I think you, you, you've got that. I'm not gonna tell you which one it is. <laughs> You're like, no, <laughs> don't want anyone to know that I passed that one up. Yeah, yeah, you know, cause, it, and, I, it, and me wanting that song back or wanting a redo on that choice would take away from somebody else's choice and being able yeah. to get it's just not my path and it's theirs right? so yeah, yeah for sure look, i think that's probably like you said a lot of people have gone through that where they you know maybe didn't hear something that someone else heard and then you hear yeah. it and you're like oh, man. yeah yeah i yeah. think you've been pretty good with your choices though yeah i think it goes with any any sort of uh anything in life i mean you look at actors who've turned down famous actors who've turned down like massive roles and you know they probably would have been as big or maybe they wouldn't have been as big yes that's true they went down that role, yeah. um so going back to our whole being cooped up at home kind of thing. Um, is there something you've, you've found um, that you're doing more of now that you're at home or, cause I feel like even though my life hasn't changed too much, I'm not traveling as much, but I mean, I work from home. I do a lot of stuff in my house, but I feel like my routine is totally different just because I know I can't go outside. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've been enjoying the backyard a lot more than what, what I normally would. Mm -hmm. Um, hang out with the dogs and chucking the dogs to the ball back and forth and little trampoline with Veda and just trying to enjoy those moments and just where you forget about what's going on. And yeah, that. for sure. Yeah. So uh, I, what's the weather out there for you guys? Uh, it's actually really nice today. So knock on wood that it stays that way. Um, but yeah, it's kind of been a mix of rain and, and warm weather. My parents, um, they're in like North of Toronto and they have had so much snow. Yeah. Uh, and I hate, I hate that when it's like a nice amount of snow is okay, but you know, when you're already cooped up at home and then you're stuck in even more with the snow. Yeah. Yeah. Spring can't come fast enough. I know. Yeah. So that we can okay. at least enjoy some, you know, blooming flowers and trees. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so have you guys, um, I think we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but did you guys jump on the stock up on toilet paper bandwagon? We, we have a normal amount of toilet paper okay. <laughs> stock in this house. So yeah, we didn't have to go and do any of that. It was yeah. ridiculous. It's crazy. I know. I'm like, I have, you know, the amount that I need. And then I was running out of um, paper towel. Um, and, you know, I buy like a two pack and I yeah. just needed a roll of paper towel and there was none left. I'm like, oh, I crazy. actually need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm doing the right thing. Right. I think we should, like Costco, I heard is not taking any reef. Like they're not taking toilet paper back. Like they're not taking these big items that people will bulk bring back. Hopefully when this is done. Um, I think we should all just band together. And if we go over to somebody's house and we like, happen to be in the bathroom and notice they have like a mound of toilet we should publicly shame even our friends <laughs> yeah if they've hoarded any sort of cleaning product or toilet paper yeah. you open up the <laughs> freezer it's got all of the ground beef you know like or the chicken that i that was what russell dickerson said that it's moved on from toilet paper to chicken breasts that yeah. are gone yeah it's what insane. are you what are you gonna do with all that chicken when this is over you're gonna have pounds of chicken for the rest of your life <laughs> you get publicly shamed by your friends over there. yes for sure yeah. for dallas at least <laughs> um so you guys have the two dogs i saw veda playing yeah. outside with moose 
Um, what's that? I love seeing kids growing up with their dogs. Are they buddies like the two of them? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And lady is our older lab. She's a a little, she moves a little less than Moose for sure. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, my, my daughter and my son are both close with the, with the dog. Yeah. Did you have a dog growing up? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yep. I've had dogs, uh, most of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have like a specific breed? Cause I grew up my whole life. We had German shepherds. Yep, all I had a German shepherd. Yeah. I had a German shepherd collie was the mix, I believe. And then, <laughs> um, and then I had, uh, oh, my sister had a little Shih Tzu or something and she promised to take care of it. She didn't. And then <laughs> there was no longer a Shih Tzu. That was a lot like my sister. No, yeah. my sister actually then, had a Shih Tzu that she, you know, her boyfriend in high school had, they were breeding puppies and she brought it home and she was like, mom, you know, this is our, my dog. And Bella was totally my mom's dog. My sister never <laughs> trained her at all. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Get that. Um, yeah, but we had, uh, yeah. I had a couple beagles, uh, my early twenties and then, yeah, we've got, we've got a couple labs now. So yeah. what are you, obviously if you're putting the music out, I'm assuming maybe there's obviously touring is tough to talk about right now, but maybe a tour in the works once this all. Yeah. I mean, we had a, a really busy July, um, hopefully we're able to, to do that or if they get moved a little later, I don't know what's going to happen with those, but yeah. on that, not a whole lot of plans. So we'll, um, we'll see how the rest of this whole situation plays out and we'll just kind of roll with it. I mean, we're all in the same situation. Hopefully people that had tours that were just starting or were part, you know, weren't able to be finished can go back out and make their money yeah. uh, back and sort of, you know, that's a really tough situation. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. I mean, you know, the agents and, uh, Everybody's all in the same position. We're all trying to have each other succeed and get back on this horse and, and, and ride out of here fast. So we'll, um, I'm sure it'll come together fine. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because you have a lot of great festival spots that I was excited to see you at too. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, yeah, we got to wait until it's safe, obviously. And, yeah, for sure. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm imagining how, how great it's going to be and how much we appreciate being able to come together like that in large groups and celebrate music and just have a good time together. I, I really hope that this is a bit of a, of a reset to everybody's mind that, you know, all this other BS doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Let's, let's just take care of each other and, and try to stay healthy and, and enjoy live music and, and create good environments for each other and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I hope that people take, you know, a little lesson from this, even though obviously we didn't ask for any of this. I think it is a moment to kind of reflect and go, what's really important in life? Yeah, because um, I've definitely kind of sat down and been like, I mean, I can get along in life without a lot of things that I thought I had to have. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot more simplicity that I'm learning about life. Um, yeah. What would you say to somebody? Because I feel like, I don't know, I like seeing your input on stuff. Um, to the people that are not taking this seriously, what would you want? Like, what would you say to them if you had someone in, close in your family or friendship group that wasn't maybe listening well yeah it's 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 frustrating i mean i know i know that's um if you've seen some businesses like locally like it it just here it's like a trampoline park here locally i think just had they finally gave up after people complained about how there's a a, a public trampoline park with kids jumping around in it i mean it is it is beyond comprehension that you're seeing people like you think we're all idiots that we're sitting in here like and, and taking this serious like like what do you I don't know. It's, it's, um, it's a real show of character. If you're, if you're out and about not listening, right. It's, it's, um, it's not about you. It's about somebody else's um, family member who's, who could be really seriously affected by this and, and die. It's, it's, it's that serious. So um, yeah, I think, I think, I think people will uh, hopefully come out of this and realize um, if you've made those choices, you uh, should probably take a look in the mirror and, and realize that you're, you should probably work on your selfishness a little bit. And, yeah. and Think, you know, think about other people. Because I mean, at first I didn't really necessarily take it overly seriously. Um, I think we actually kind of jumped into the social distancing thing, maybe before most people did, at least here. Um, Just because we were like, "Ah, I get this feeling that it's not, Mm -hmm. you know, a good thing. Um, But I'm glad that we did because I, we even said, I'm like, you know, neither of us are hypochondriacs at all. We're like, you know, generally healthy but we just had this weird feeling that we were like, no, I think we need to kind of just pull back a little bit. Yeah. 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 Follow your gut. You should always do that. 